What's going on you guys TBR here back yet again with another King of Fighters all-star video and welcome back to the channel and more importantly happy Friday to all of you out there TGIF and guess what it's Wrestlemania weekend baby in today's video we are going to be talking about everything Alexandrite team relay dungeon that's right you guys this video was supposed to be out yesterday but Netmarble decided that they were going to release a patch and torpedo the entire thing so it was great but we're gonna go ahead and try this a second time and see if our luck is any better. But before we go ahead and get into all of that and more, make sure if you guys haven't already done so, you smash that like button and subscribe. And before Netmarble decides to release another patch, let's go ahead and get this video out of the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and talk about everything that I have learned along the way over the course of the past couple of days against this newest boss in the King of Fighters All-Star. And what I can tell you guys right off the bat is this is a really fun event. I am really liking this event. I think this this event is a lot of fun. I am having a blast with this. And overall, this is really good stuff. More of this net marble, please. Now, of course, the reason why we are doing this is because we want that EX generic memory that is currently available on this mileage for the Team Relay rewards. It's right here, but we need a lot of points in order to get it. So we're going to talk about how you guys can go ahead and boost your scores, get better scores, and get that EX generic memory in today's video. So for those of you who are living under a rock, just as an aside, really quick, we touched on this in our intro, but they did go ahead and issue an emergency patch yesterday, which meant that they went ahead and took our cumulative score against this guy and zeroed it out, but they compensated us by giving us entry tickets to make up for each day that they reset. But basically, go in, go to your inbox in-game, pick up those tickets if you haven't already done so. You have to use them before Monday. So just make sure you get them done on Sunday if you're gonna stall and wait, right? Because you're gonna need to make up for those couple days you lost. The nice thing is, is that one, you should probably score a little bit better anyway because you've probably learned a little bit, gotten a little bit better at the event. And on top of that, you'll get more coinage for doing that. So it ended up working out in the player basis favor anyway, so it wasn't a huge deal. So with that being said, pick those up in your inbox and make sure you do your runs before Monday. So with that out of the way, let's talk about what we're looking at here. So basically we have a three week long event in order to pick up that EX generic memory and the rest of the rewards on that mileage. So what we're looking at here for the first week is we are of course going to have this right here so you guys can see blue and purple green and red that's pretty much what we've got as far as the different elements between what we want and what the boss is going to be using so that is what we've got there you guys can see this breakdown here so we'll talk more about it when we get into the strategy info and it is going to of course change over the course of each week so it will reset on mondays we'll have a new element against the boss that we'll have to worry about and then we'll have to change those elements accordingly and you guys can see that breakdown here so that's kind of what we're looking at. Three week long event, last day is 417. And that's what we got there as far as how long we have to go ahead and try and get this memory. So basically with that said, if we take a look at the strategy info, you guys will see that basically what we're going to want is we're going to want purple and red element fighters, right? Purple and red. That's what we see here. That's what we see here in the strategy info. So let's go ahead and talk about how we're going to accomplish getting these points. So first and foremost, the amount of points that you're going to want at minimum is going to be around 29 billion each day, right? So basically 29 billion each day is going to assure you of getting that EX generic memory by the end of the event, so long as there's no shenanigans and everything it works out. I say round up and do 30, but hey, that's just me trying to be safe. So I would say try to do 30 billion, you'll be in good shape. So there's a couple different ways that we can go about this. And obviously everybody is still play testing and trying to find the best kinds of strategies here, but I'm gonna go in and tell you guys kind of what I'm noticing as big trends against this guy and things that you can do to improve your scores and walk you through the team that I use. Because as you guys can see, my best damage run so far has been 107 billion, and I'm at 266 billion cumulatively, right? Which means that my rewards, I'm currently sitting right here. Now these rewards obviously go towards that mileage, go towards getting you that generic memory, and this is going to be a big component of this. You wanna pick as many of these up as possible, but getting those accumulated scores, as you guys saw, I'm at 266 billion, that pretty much means that I'm going to be able to probably get roughly probably in 
we'll say around this area right here, probably by the end of this first week, which is real good. I'm happy with that, if that is the case. But I think I'll improve a little bit more each day. So with that said, a couple different things you want to keep in mind as far as what we want to do here. And then we'll talk about strategy. So when it comes to what you want to do here, you first and foremost want BS and SS fighters. Now, the biggest downside to this event is the fact that BS and SS fighters outside of rewards are not necessarily readily available anymore, which is kind of a downside to this. Um, outside of getting things like mystery tickets or selectors from rewards, you really don't have a good way of getting SS and BS fighters anymore. Um, hopefully that changes now that we have this going on because they obviously want us to use BS and SS fighters. So with that said, Basically, if you're somebody who lacks them, you're going to have to default to whatever you have that's going to work the best within the parameters of the different things that we talk about here. But if you have BS and SS fighters, you're going to be in great shape. Hopefully they end up adding those into something like maybe even the Unified Banner down the road. Who knows? But I'm hoping that they give us better ways of getting them, especially if they want us to use them. New players have no way of getting them readily available anymore. So that's a big, big downside. And the only real downside I see to this event, to be honest, I like this event, like I said. So with that said, we've already established that we want purple and we want red element fighters, but we also want burn and chill. We're going to be able to stack burn and chill on this guy. You guys can see that here. So that's another big component of this. But unfortunately, one of the big downsides for us is we cannot have our AI fighters automatically use their finisher skills. So you can't go into this and treat this such as like an immortal event or something like that where you're stalling the clock constantly, unfortunately. So that is something you're going to have to keep in mind. That is an unfortunate part of this event and it is what it is. It is something that they put in there to try and stall us and make it a little bit more difficult, but you can work around it and we'll talk about how. So with that all out of the way, those are the big things you wanna consider when building teams, when going in against this guy. So let's talk about the teams, what I'm using. So first up here, let's talk about my Zero. Um, Zero is a slave. Zero is literally just there to be a leader for my team. We're using a purple element team. So as you guys can see, we have zero here. He increases my purple element fighters attack by 50% and their power charge rate by 15%. Really, it's just the attack boost because the power charge rate increase isn't gonna do diddly squat against this guy, unfortunately. Um, but the reason I say he's a slave is because there's a couple different cards he's carrying to help my team. He's kind of supporting my team because my designated DPS on this team is Leona. And we're gonna talk about how to approach this fight with her in a moment. But with that being said, I am using this card set right here. And the reason I'm using this card set, if you guys take a look, it increases attack by 13%, but it has a 30% chance to increase the target's damage received by 10% for eight seconds upon landing an active skill on a cooldown of 20 seconds. This is really, really good because it means that we are going to be able to get that 30% chance to increase the damage received to Alexandrite. And that is going to be spread across our entire team. So that is something that is super helpful and a great support set for him so the rest of my team can do more damage including himself another thing that is on here with him is this card here and you're going to notice this card on a ton of my characters again remember we want to stack chill and burn so right here the serving is miserable card this option is going to have a 50 percent chance to deal chill damage equal to 140 percent of attack to the target upon landing a crit so that is what we want we want that chill damage that is why that is there and it is a huge boon to this character being on the team because it makes him make sense and gives him something to do besides being just a leader with a really nice card set for the rest of my team. So he can help with stacks as well. Um, as far as stones go, I'm just gonna kind of move through these real quick so you guys can see. There you go, that's what I've got on there. I should probably max those out on him. I've never done that. But anyway, that is what we got with zero. Now, when it comes to Leona, Leona is my designated DPS on this team. And the reason for that is pretty obvious. It's Leona, she's a great character, but if you guys remember, we are going to not be able to fire off our finishers automatically and gaining power against this guy is like pulling teeth. So the reason why I'm not using something like an idle set is I want to go ahead and be able to, because I'm focused on using Leona manually when I'm doing my runs, I wanna be able to fire off finishers. And I will tell you guys this right now, whether you believe me or not, Firing off finishers is going to make or break whether or not your run is going to be successful or not in the long run. You need to be able to get to finishers. That is very important. You need one character at minimum that you can get to those finishers on. And that's the reason why I'm using the max mode set because I can get that 30% chance to charge five power slots. If you can get 
two to three of your finishers off against this guy with any one team, you're in great shape. You're going to probably get a pretty good score as long as you're doing everything else correctly, but you need to be able to get to your finishers. So that is why I'm using this. That is why it's there. Very, very important. So Leona is the character that I just manually use throughout the fight, and you'll see that in the footage. So with that said, that's what I've got loaded out on her. Pretty much standard stuff. If you guys take a look here, you can see what I've got for the stones. Not anything too crazy here. And that's that. So again, guys, whatever your designated DPS is, I recommend using a set where they can get those five power charge bars. So that way they can throw out those finishers because you need to be able to stall the clock, right? So with that said, Next up here, we have Iori. Um, if it'll let me click on Iori, good lord, what just happened? Um, <laughs> all right, so Iori here, um, I'm probably gonna swap this set out, but I've just been play testing stuff. Um, but basically with Iori here, um, he is going to also have the serving as miserable option card there. So that's important to him as well. He's really there because of the typing and etc. cetera. Um, but if we take a look here, that's what I've got for stones, pretty standard stuff overall. Yeah, so that's what I got there. I don't have a good moonstone form, unfortunately, but hopefully I get one out of some boxes. I think I have some laying around I can finally cash in. I'd actually just gotten these two to A5. I'd been sitting on generic memories forever, just waiting to see if they were gonna release an event where I would need them for certain characters. And lo and behold, here we are. So that's what I went ahead and did here. So these characters will actually be even better once I can get to things like their EX skills, because that's another big, big thing with these characters is getting to things like EX skills is really important. So being able to change up your characters is really important depending on the character. And that is going to segue us into the next team, because this is where we start to talk about those EX skills, because I actually am using some on this team to great effect. So I wanna talk about Bison here. So first up, I guess we'll talk about what he has equipped and then we'll just go ahead and talk about why he's so good here. Um, so besides being the leader of the team, he is going to have these cards here. So as you guys can see, the Street Fighter set, and I've got this cool option because he's an SS, but then I've got this right here. So this has a 30% chance to deal burn damage equal to 40% of attack upon landing and active. This is going to be kind of basically akin to what we had with the Serving is Miserable set for chill, but for burn, right? So. That is what we have here, and this helps him to be more useful than just being a slave to just being a leader and an EX skill at the end of the day, because his EX skill is vastly important to this team. This is what I've got here as far as his stones are concerned. And again, guys, this isn't going to be a strategy guide or anything like that, because we're still play testing, we're still learning, we're still trying to min-max, and we're still trying to nail all these details down, but this is just what I'm using right now. Um, so as far as what we're doing here with my Bison, we have Weaken. Weaken is really, really important because Weaken is going to increase all enemies damage received by 30% for 15 seconds upon use. Really, really important. Um, basically, this is going to help feed my designated DPS, which is going to be my Mai, which if you guys have the new Mai or Kula, you can pretty much just skate by as using them as your designated DPS. If you have them both at a decent awakening level even, you can just use one of each of them on each team and just use them as your designated DPS for the team and just kind of go to town um, and you're going to do really well. Um, but otherwise, as you guys can see with my team, even a low level my is very good. So that is pretty much what we got here as far as what we're using for that skill. And that is why we're using it. It is so good as a support. You wanna kind of lean on your supports against this guy. Um, my designated DPS is going to be my Mizey here. So this is my, um, obviously. Um, so basically you got my loadout there, not anything too crazy. I need more fodder cards. I need more fodder cards. Um, obviously don't have any of the stones because she's only at level 90. But again, still really, really good here. So you guys can kind of see what I've got going on there with my, but she's my designated DPS. She's kind of like what Leona is to the first team for me. She's the character I'm going to manually control the most. And I'm going to be just trying to basically get to those finishers because again, I do have that 30% chance to charge five power slots upon landing and active. So that's what we got there. So basically, again, kind of the same idea behind the first team of trying to get to those finishers with Leona I'm trying to accomplish with my Mai. And then finally, another support character, we have our Shizuru. Um, this character is incredible here um, if you have her maxed out. Um, and the reason being is because she is actually going to have 
Energize, which resets your tag cooldowns, which doesn't matter, but increases all team members' attack by 25% for 15 seconds. That is what matters. So basically, you can go in and just use her and Bison's support skills and go to town with your DPS, whoever that might be. And that's kind of what you'll see me doing in the run that you're going to see. So again, I'm using another one of these sets that's going to increase the target's damage received. So this one here is going to have a 30% chance to increase the target's damage received by 10% for 8 seconds upon landing an active skill. So that's what we got there as far as the set I'm using on her. And then we have this option here, again, serving as miserable. So that way we can get those chill stacks. So that is what we got as far as that's concerned. As far as stones are concerned with her, this is what I've got here. Just kind of blow through these things. And that's what we got. So that is the stones, that's the loadout for my Shizuru. So that is what I'm using on my team. Now the big takeaways here are you want supports, you want EX skills that can support the team. If you can't get that, then you want sets that can support the team like we've shown you. There's a couple in the game and they are very, very good for this. Um, other things, serving as miserable set, that shouldn't go option card, anything that can help you stack against this guy because the burn and the chill is what you want to stack. That is going to be helpful. And then you want to be able to get to your finishers. Finishers, finishers, finishers. I cannot stress it enough. Get to your finishers so that way you can prolong the fight a little bit and get some more damage in. So with that said, that is what I'm using on this team. Now, some of you may have seen characters like Taki out there just going to town on this guy. That's because she can actually stall the clock a little bit. So if you have her, definitely use her, especially if you have her maxed out. She is really good here. Um, very good characters. Plenty of runs that you can watch kind of how to use her against this guy on YouTube. Just go look them up. Very, very interesting. She's very good here, and it gives her a use case, which is something she's lacked for a little while now. But with that said, that's pretty much kind of just the bare bones ins and outs of what I'm doing. Um, so basically, you'll see in the run that you're going to see all the things I've just talked about in practice. And again, I feel like my score is pretty respectable. It could definitely be better. Once I get these characters completed and I'm able to get change up kits for characters such as like this is this is just going to be one of those things where it's going to take some time um but getting these change up kits for these characters now that i have them maxed out and again i had just been saving and sitting on generic memories for a while in case i needed them so these are going to be two characters that i'm currently working on trying to get those ex skills for and once that happens that'll be even more interesting as far as the amount of damage they're able to put up against this guy but overall, if you have a character like Halmaru, Halmaru is another really, really good character for this. The EX version, that is. Um, again, Mayan Kula are probably going to be the best overall just because they're Mayan Kula and they're the newest, so highest DPS characters that you can get right now outside of the previous banner. So, you know, you guys know how power creep works in this game, but... Overall, I feel like that pretty much covers it. I'm going to go ahead and let you guys see the footage, but I just wanted to go ahead and give you guys my thoughts and opinions as well as kind of what I'm doing against this guy. And that's pretty much what I'm doing right now. And again, I don't want to call this a strategy guide because I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, this is the only strategy guide you'll ever need. And I know everything about this mode and every little detail in and out. And yeah, if you're not doing what I'm doing, then you're not going to do it. No, I'm not going to do that because I still have things I need to unlock even as a veteran, and there are still things that we have not learned about this guy yet. There are still things that we have not tested against this guy, and I guarantee you, by the time the next one of these rolls around, we are going to have way more information, and things are going to look vastly different. So it just kind of comes down to rolling with it and kind of just learning together. But overall, I think that that should at least, for some of these characters, they should be readily available or in your inbox already or in your barracks. I always say inbox. They're not in your mail. Don't look there. They're not there. Um, but in your barracks, in your roster, you should have a lot of these characters if you've been playing the game for a decent amount of time. If you don't, again, you'll just have to make do with whatever the newest and best characters you might have are. But as long as you follow some of the principles we've talked about here, trying to get to those finishers, stacking that burn and that chill, using your support characters, using your support skills, etc., you're going to be in good shape, you guys. So with that being said, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to let you guys see the run. Um, I think that about covers the main details of what I wanted to talk about here. But overall, if you guys have any questions or if you have any advice for other players, leave them in the comment section down below. This is just what I'm using. So you guys can let me know what you're using, how you're doing. I know a lot of people out there are doing really well with this. And for that, I am very grateful because we all deserve that EX generic memory, even though it's not technically generic. We talked about this in the Discord earlier yesterday i believe it was 
But even though this isn't technically generic, we do get these guys here, which unless you get RNG screwed, it's probably going to basically be generic. I mean, it kind of comes down to how this thing ends up working out, but I think it'll all work out for you in the long run. But with that being said, you guys, I'm going to get out of here. That way this isn't, you know, 30 minute video. But anyway, I'm going to leave. You guys enjoy it. Watch the run. Tell me what you think, but I'll talk to you all in the next one. You all take care. Peace.